to me. Wiggles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. It's my first time. Okay. <clears throat> we were friends for one year. Her name was Jennifer. I cast her in a show based off of friend's recommendation. We became instant BFF. We hung out all the time. If we didn't see each other for more than four days, it felt weird. We watched all three seasons of Veronica Mars together. <laughs> it took forever because we weren't allowed to watch it without each other. We did stupid girl stuff, like if one of us was having a shitty week, we would sit and watch TV, and the other would play with our hair and scratch our back and make us feel better. We painted each other's toenails, for Christ's sake. We drank a lot together. We drank during the day. We got afternoon drunk. <laughs> In July, after about 10 months of knowing each other, Jennifer ran into a situation where she needed a place to live for a month or so. My roommate Nancy and I had an extra room. It's not really a room, it's the office and doesn't really have a door, just an arch that leads in the living room. But we told her that she could stay there since it was so short term and you know she really needed somewhere. And because she was such a good friend, she moved in the first week of August. Jennifer was messy, but um, we cut her some slack because she didn't have a room and she had nowhere to put her stuff and that must be really hard. <laughs> She also hated doing dishes, but we all have those chores we don't like to do. I don't like vacuuming, folding clothes, or dusting. So I took a trip to Chicago the last weekend of August, and the night before I left, Nancy and I walked to American Apparel because I wanted to buy socks. I didn't even take my keys, and we know that we used her to get hers to get back in the house, but she still couldn't find them the next day. Luckily, she had a spare car key and we had an extra house key, so I left for Chicago and we figured they'd turn up. When I got back from Chicago, Jennifer immediately left for a visit to Austin. No one had done any dishes while I was gone. And Nancy was angry because some of her food was gone. When asked, Jennifer claimed it was her sister that had eaten the food. Nancy still had not found her keys. We decided to look around in Jennifer's room. She's so absent-minded that we just didn't put it past her to pick them up to use to go smoke and then just drop them somewhere in a room. We found a couple of little things, like my InStyle magazine and mascara, stuff like that. <laughs> and then we found this shipping box from Urban Outfitters. Um, this woman, my friend who lived in the apartment before us, she emailed me about a month ago telling me that she forgot to change the address on her last order and she'd be in town and could we just come and pick it up then. But when she called me to see if she could come over, the box hadn't arrived. We guessed that maybe she'd put it the wrong address on it or worse, that someone had stolen it from our front doorstep. We just wrote it off. But this box in Jennifer's room had my friend's name on it. It was open and empty. Nancy and I tried to rationalize. Maybe she found it empty. <laughs> Maybe there was some normal explanation. I called her and I told her we'd gone through her room to find the keys. This was really no big deal and we did not feel bad at all. And that we found this box and why was it empty and where was the stuff that was inside of it? <clears throat> she seemed really uncomfortable and confessed that it was her sister who had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that she actually wasn't allowed in her mom's house anymore, unsupervised, and that she had these same problems at her last apartment with her old roommates. I asked her to get the money from her sister to reimburse my friend and told her we would talk about it when she got back. But there were things about her story that weren't adding up. Nancy and I knew we had to confront her when she got back. It was all very stressful. <laughs> she finally got back and we arranged a time to all sit down together. As she was on her way home, she texted me that she wanted me to read a document that was open on her laptop because she had a lot to tell us but can't bring herself to actually say it. So we read it. She wrote that her sister is not a klepto. That it was her all along. Eating our food. Opening the package. And that she had in fact been stealing money from us as well. 
She said that she... <laughs> she said that she had thought about killing herself, <clears throat> that she was compulsively destructive, and many other things that I can't recall or that don't really matter anyways. I wish to God that I had emailed myself that note, but it's probably best that I didn't. Anyway, she came home, hot mess, crying, apologizing. We calmly told her that she couldn't stay with us anymore, and we got her key back. She left her stuff at our house because she was supposed to be moving to Austin in a couple weeks. Nancy and I hugged after she left, and we cried and apologized to each other for letting this happen. <laughs> About a week later, we decided to go through a room and pack it for her to make sure she wasn't taking anything that wasn't hers, to make it faster when she actually did come to get her stuff, and to hopefully find Nancy's keys. It smelled. Not completely disgusting, just like everything in there needed to be washed. There was old food and drinks lying around. It was really messy. But then, as I was going through a basket of my cat's toys that were next to her bed, I found tampon applicators out of the package, some of them bloody, yes, a lot of them, a whole period's worth. Of all the things that had happened in this whole shitty scenario, that was it for me. I decided then and there that anyone who could do that It took her three weeks to get all her shit out, maybe four, I don't know. The last disc of Veronica Mars came in the next week. The one that has the preview for the next season before it got canceled. Oh. I sent it back without watching it. I really miss her. 